Hi guys. As you know, all videos have to start with, hey guys, so hey guys. Today's video is about conservation of linear momentum, where we do a slight twist on things and we end up calling the fluxes the forces. So this is for very simple problems like a rocket. I would consider a rocket to be a simple problem with respect to the conservation of linear momentum. Um, and, you know, this whole lecture is sort of ripe for, you know, a, a glorious uh, Star Wars analogy and, and theme. I'm not really into Star Wars, you know. I, I grew up and I was not the Star Wars kid. Um, and everyone is crazy about Star Wars, but I just don't get it. You know, it's like, okay, Darth Vader is Luke's father. I get it. Do we really need 11 more episodes of Star Wars to fill in the gaps around that one central thing? Anyway, as usual, I digress. Today we're not going to be looking at uh, Star Wars items. We're going to be looking at balloons, something fun and fluffy and simple. Okay, so the problem we're going to look at first is the stationary balloon. Okay, so I think uh, the question that we have here is the following. If we have a balloon of a certain weight, so 0 0.04 newtons, and that is going to be the net weight minus the buoyancy, um, and we know the mass of the balloon in the air is 4.1 grams, and actually the balloon in the air should weigh a little bit more when it's inflated, um, you can think about that as you're falling asleep, why that would be the case. But anyway, um, the balloon should weigh a little more once it's, once it's inflated than just the balloon on its own. Um, I measured the, pr I literally did this, the pressure in a balloon, um, for the balloon that I'll show you in some videos is six inches of water. I used a little tube of water and connected it to the balloon and it deflected six inches. Um, and that is about 1,500 pascals of gauge pressure, just for reference, so we're going to be using that. Um, the balloon opening diameter is one centimeter, so this uh, opening here is one centimeter. And the question that we have is, if we open the balloon and let the air shoot out, um, what is the force required to hold the balloon in place? Okay, so I think most of us have some intuition with respect to this, but um, I think I will show you a quick video about that uh, just so you can see how that goes. So it would look something like this. Okay, so the solution to this is a relatively straightforward forces and fluxes, right? So the forces on the system, we have the weight and the buoyancy. So uh, I guess I shouldn't use a red pen when I'm drawing on a red balloon. Um, so we have acting downward, we have the weight minus the buoyancy. That is attracting the balloon to the earth. Um, what other forces do we have in place? Uh, we know that as the air shoots out down here, it's going, the balloon is going to try to go upward, and so we're going to have to exert a force probably in the downward direction. But um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just draw that in as an upward force, pretend that I have no idea what I'm doing, um, and let the signs take care of it. Okay, so if you draw it in in the positive coordinate direction, in this case Z is positive upward, the signs will take care of it if you do them correctly. So in our forces column, we have the support force holding this control volume in place. We have minus the weight minus the buoyancy, so that's the downward force, and that's really the only force acting on it, okay? Um, on the flux side, we have only one control surface where the air is jetting out, that would be down here. Um, and so the momentum flux that we would put there would be rho, so the density of the air. The velocity in the z direction is minus, we'll call it v out, It's uh, because it's in the minus z direction. It's an outflow, so it gets a positive q, where q is equal to v times a, and the area has been calculated up here for the one centimeter diameter uh, balloon opening, okay? So um, if we do some of the numbers on this, on the left-hand side, we end up uh, the weight minus the buoyancy was already given to us. The one thing we do still need is the V out. 
um, if you actually were to track the flow along a streamline that maybe looked like that, where you had maybe P of the balloon up here, sorry, that's hard to see, um, and atmospheric pressure right when the balloon uh, air exited the balloon, um, you could come up with an equation for V out that would look something like this, where V out was equal to, so this comes from Bernoulli, uh, the square root of two times the delta P, where delta P is the pressure difference between inside and outside the balloon divided by the density of air. For this 1500 Pascal uh, pressure um, and a density of about 1.2 or maybe a little bit bigger since it, the air is slightly pressurized, you end up with a velocity for the outflow velocity of nearly 50 meters per second, which is crazy fast. And I don't know how unrealistic that is. I really don't have a sense of what 50, you know, 50 meters per second certainly sounds fast, but I don't know if that's actually like super fast or not, or if that's realistic. This V out estimate actually is, you know, a Bernoulli estimate. So we don't account for any friction associated with the energy loss. You know, probably there's going to be energy lost as this flow is forced through the narrow balloon opening. Anyway, as you know, the last thing that we do in, in these problems is to sum the forces and the fluxes. And so we would end up with something that look like this, where we have Tz minus the net weight, so weight minus buoyancy, is equal to minus rho Vq. And if you run the numbers on this, you get that the support force required to hold this balloon in place once you release all the air, at least initially when you have that 50 meter per second velocity, is equal to um, negative 0 0.2 newtons, okay? So negative 0.2 newtons. I don't think any of us have a good sense of what is a newton, um, but 0 0.2 newtons is, is very, very, very tiny. Uh, it's less than a 20th of a pound, okay? Um, so I guess that does match your intuition, right? You're holding this balloon in your hand. You have to exert hardly any force to hold it in place as all of that air is rushing out, okay? Um, one interesting thing in the problem I noticed is this idea that you have 0.22 PSI, and if you think about the water rocket problem, we had 50 PSI, and it only generated a water velocity of about 20 meters per second. And the reason that we have 0.22 PSI and we have way more velocity, 50 meters per second, is basically because the denominator of this Bernoulli or pipe flow kind of an equation cares about the density of the fluid. And as you know, density of air is about 1, so uh, 1.2 kilogram per meter cubed. And water is a factor of 1,000 greater. So um, all things equal, water will have a much lower velocity when you're converting potential energy to, to kinetic energy. Okay. Anyway, this is how you could solve this problem, and it's a stationary control volume where the control volume is not moving at all, okay? So now we're going to flip this problem a little bit. So problem two, what we do is we are going to release the balloon. So we're going to hold the air in there, release it, and as you know, the balloon will fly around the room, much to the delight of everyone in the house. Um, uh, I'm joking, but it is kind of delightful. Um, and for this problem, what we're going to try to figure out is what is the initial rate of acceleration of the balloon once you release it? And everything is the same as before. The only bit of information that we didn't use last time that I kind of carried over here is that the mass of the balloon and the air, this whole system, so the mass of all of this is 4.1 grams, okay? And that will come into, into play uh, a little bit later. And what we want to do is find the initial rate of acceleration of the balloon when released. Um, and we're going to neglect any drag which would act from the surrounding air on the balloon once it started to shoot through the room. So I don't have a lot of Star Wars gear, so this is where we're going to use the force. So it would be natural for me to dress up as Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker or Princess Leia. But as you know, Party City is closed right now, and so there's no means for me to get any of these props together. So um, I'm going to show you the one bit of Star Wars-like uh, material that I have in this next video where we release the balloon into our house. Come to the dark side, we have pie.
All right, so now that you've seen that, um, we're going to talk about how you would solve this problem. Okay, and so it would look something like this. So we have the same forces and fluxes, all the numbers are the same. Now what we do is a very subtle sleight of hand here, okay? So normally we would say, okay, forces equal the fluxes, right? In this case, we're going to do something sneaky. We're going to actually move the fluxes over to the side of the forces. So we're going to say forces minus the fluxes, and all the signs on the fluxes are going to be the same as before. And then we're going to set that equal to mass times acceleration of the entire control volume, okay? And, and technically this is cheating a little bit because our analysis is really supposed to be for non-accelerating control volumes, but if it's accelerating slow enough, and you'd have to figure out whether it was slow enough or not, you can kind of cheat in this way where you do it this way, okay? So the way that that looks is that you have this. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have the weight acting downward has a minus sign, and then you have the fluxes come over, and you flip that minus rho vq to a rho vq, um, and then that gets set to mass times acceleration. And essentially this free body diagram on this could be thought of as uh, something like this, where we have the uh, weight over here. And this thing, now we could think of, we've converted the, the flux to the left-hand side where it's more of a force now. That is what you call the thrust force, okay? And so in, the, in terms of the free body diagram, it ends up looking something like this, where you're thinking about the flux as a force, uh, and we don't still consider the flux on the right-hand side in this case. This would be the, the thrust force like that, where thrust is equal to rho vq, at least for simple sort of problems like this. And in that case, that's gonna be equal to mass times acceleration, basically Newton's second law. This mass here is the total mass of the system, so that's that 4.1 grams that we had before. And the acceleration is the unknown, so we have, um, so that would be minus weight plus thrust is equal to mass times acceleration. If you do this one, you get that acceleration is equal to, if you want to run the numbers, um, you would have uh, 0.24 newtons, that's the net weight, uh, minus uh, wait, I think I'm screwing that up. That's the thrust minus the net weight, and then we divide by the mass, which is 4.1 grams, which is 0 0.0041 kg. So this is newtons over kilograms, which will give us meters per second. If you do that, you get another number close to 50, which is 49 meters per second squared. And that is the rate of acceleration of this entire balloon as soon as you release it. And this is similar to the water rocket problem where you, you release it and then you have all of this rho vq that's acting to accelerate the entire system upward, okay? So it's kind of a, a subtle sleight of hand here where we move the fluxes over to the left-hand side. I don't recommend doing this in general unless you're clear that, you know, you have something like a rocket, like if this thing up here was a rocket, you know, and you had uh, some propellant moving out of the out of the bottom at some rate rho vq i would definitely say then you're going to convert that to be thrust going up and weight going down uh, there's no buoyancy really for a rocket since it's in air and it's so heavy um, and those would be the two forces although i guess i don't like that i'm calling this a t given that i usually call the t the support force but anyway i think you get the idea so anyway that's the gist of it uh, and this is kind of the sneaky way that you can convert a flux to a force, and that's why I say use the force. So I guess I'll close with the best thing I could do uh, in terms of a Star Wars impersonation, which is to um, basically uh, snarf up my microphone while I talk. Use the force. Wait, Darth Vader, did he have an English accent? Every, every impression I do now has an English or a Scottish accent, and it's really sort of a sad state of, sad state of affairs. Anyway, all right, have a good day.